Today's um, Ask Finola How Live is all about brand design. Now, brand design, I am a complete lover of. It's part of the whole brand story. It's a really critical part of the brand story. And the thing that I want to kind of start you with, and I have loads of ideas that I want to talk to you about, and the first one is this idea that a brand design is actually visual storytelling. And the best way to communicate, to understand brand, and to actually realize its importance to your business is to realize that it is visual storytelling. Now, in my experience, um, for some reason, many small businesses actually underestimate the power of visual storytelling, the power of brand. And all we have to do is look at the big brands to actually realize its importance for us as uh, smaller businesses, as entrepreneurs, as medium-sized business, as any size business. All you have to do is look at the likes of Nike and see that they've gotten to a point with their brand where they no longer even have to say their brand name. We look at their products and we see the swoosh on the shoe and we know it's Nike. So why can't we leverage that for our own business? Okay, this is the first thing I want you to understand about visual brand. Okay, so the other thing to really think about in brand design is that not only is it visual storytelling, which has which I'll talk about in a second, but it's also this idea of a visual shortcut. So if you if you invest in brand in a way to tell your story that's not just in words, in a way that there is something visual that expresses who you are very succinctly, quite deeply, with many, many layers that don't bore you, you know? When, when you invest in brand, something should happen in the process that's not, it's immediately recognizable as you, but the more that you spend time with this visual the, as a customer, the more that you fall in love with it, because you start to see these many, many layers. This is why you see things on the Amazon logo, which is, a to Z, which is Amazon and has uh, a visual cue, which is a smile with an arrow and it's from A to Z, which you don't see at first glance. Many people don't even see it at all. And in some respects, many people won't see all the different layers to your brand, but they'll come upon them time after time. When you invest in visual brand with a brand designer, specifically with a brand designer, then those layers become apparent over time. Because there's nothing worse than being perceived as being a one-dimensional creature. The power of brand would done by, and I'm really specific about this because this is an area I feel very strongly that you should invest in. I mean, many things I like people to uncover themselves. I think they have the power to uncover themselves in their strategy. But here is a place, there are three or four key places they always advocate people invest. And this is one of those places that I say that investment is required. And investment is required in a brand designer because there's a difference between a brand designer and a graphic designer. A graphic designer will do what you ask of them. There's often a tendency to micromanage graphic designers. A brand designer is someone you place your trust in because they're going to make you fall in love with you again. They're going to see something that you haven't seen because the tools in your toolkit are very often words, are storytelling, are your passion, are your values, are your way of how you realize things, are how you speak about things. The brand designer is going to capture that in this moment that you will see something in yourself you never saw before and it's worthy of you and it will allow you to stretch to take to be on your tippy toes when you think about who you are because you're not just having something uh, express who you are you're stepping into who you are and it's a stretch for you so it's one of those really key areas that i strongly strongly advocate investment and that you give it the attention that it's due because it adds this other layer to who you are. Let's flick back to this idea of shortcuts, right? 
There are many stories of kind of everyday brands that we see like toothpaste and things like that. Like, you know, the commodities that we see. And just remember this when you think of your own brand, that they very carefully do not change the color of that brand because people often shop by color. They see it as they scan, much like we have noise in social media, there is noise on the shopping aisles. So as they scan across the shopping aisles to find the product they want, they're looking for a color or an image that they see. They're not reading every single product. They're scanning very quickly for the visual cue that tells them they're in the right place and they found the right brand. We have the power to use that in our storytelling too by having a strong visual brand. It allows us to, for, it allows our customers have a visual shortcut to stop the scroll, to see, oh, I wanted to hear her, I wanted to see him, that's the piece I wanted to know. So yes, the algorithm will keep feeding us the things that we consistently like, but if we're skimming and if someone is shortcutting through things because there's so much noise, then your visual branding, your brand, more than iconography, more than color, more than something you download of Canva. And yes, it's powerful. And yes, it's a good stop back when you start stop a good shortcut for when you are starting out. But this is a piece of investment that will add layers and will add traction to who you are that will make a significant difference to your business. Am I saying that strong enough? <laughs> OK, the other thing I kind of wanted to say to you, right? is I always know when someone has invested in brand because I ask them this question, and this is the question I ask them. Do you love it? Do you love your brand? And if they hesitate, then I know it's not a true representation of who they are or where they want to get to. If they smile with that pride, then I know it truly represents them. And I don't need to say, I don't need to give feedback on whether this brand is appropriate for them because if they love it, then it's theirs. That's the true test. If they've fallen in love with it, then it's theirs. A great test I used to use many years ago was when we all used to exchange business cards. And business cards were a very good representation of brand because of how someone gave you their card. If they gave it to you with pride, like, I mean, the Japanese are great about business cards because they say, that the how you treat the business card is how you treat the person in the business relationship so they always present a business card with pride and a pause and a comment to say oh Fanola or oh Mary you got a promotion oh I love this or they talk about this as if it's identity so if you give your physical manifestation of your brand in a flyer, in a leaflet, in a card, in an annual report or something like that with pride, then you know it's a true representation. So for brand visuals, brand design to be great, then you must love what it is. I advocate investing in it. If you find yourself working with a designer that you're micromanaging, then they're not a brand designer. You're not someone who can take your story and make you see things that you haven't seen in yourself or in your business that will make you fall in love with your brand again and with you, with yourself again. So here's, I always like to leave you with something practical. So I'm going to give you some top tips. <laughs> I love the top tips of brand design, okay? I have to read them so I don't forget them, okay? Bear with me, okay? One, clearly I've said, invest in a brand designer who's creative, and whose work you admire. Because it's a close, quite intimate relationship where you're sharing your story. So you've got to like the person who represents your brand, who creates this visual story of your brand. Okay, number one. Number two, if they're, oh yeah, this is my favorite one. If they, if you know when you're getting a quote from a brand designer, if they're offering you, I'll do six designs for you, I'll do four designs for you, 50,000 designs for you until we get it right then they're not a brand designer. Because if, they're, if the intent is that they create a design that truly represents who you are, then how can they represent it in 10 different ways? There must be a story that singularly, a visual that singularly represents everything that you're about. Either one or two designs, there is rarely 
10 different versions of that story that truly represents you. So the more that they offer, the more doubt I have that they're right for you. If they're certain that this is the tr greatest way to represent you, as in they give you one or two options, then you, they, you know that they've put their all into it. And that is a true representation of you. That's really important. Quantity is not important here. Quality is important here. Number three, oh yeah. When you get your brand design, make sure you get a monochrome version too, because this is a really good test of whether a brand can stand on its own. We use monochrome versions, black versions and white versions on transparent background in so many different ways. We use them in social media. We can use them to put a little signature on something, usually in a digital space. It's so used time and time again. But not only that, it tells you how clean the design is. If it stands strong and is very clear in a, in a small version, but also in a white version or in a black version, then the brand is strong enough. That's a really good test of whether your brand is going to be good enough for you. Get it in monochrome too. Next tip, okay? Yeah, number four. I always ask this from brand designers I work with. Ask for every component as a transparent ping because it means you have stuff to work with and you can use it all across your branding and how you tell your story. And it gives you the flexibility to get more from your brand to always be on brand in your visuals. So ask for every component that they build for you as a transparent ping. And all graphic designers, sorry, all brand designers that I've ever worked with that are worth their salt will do this readily. They're happy for you to use it in this way. They spent the time and effort you invested with them, they're happy to give it to you in this way. It's yours, okay? Okay, also another tip I have for you, step number five when working with a brand designer is ask to see it in situ. So don't just get it on a white background so you see it on its own, ask to see it in action so that you know, ah, oh, that's how you'd use it. Because remember, we're asking those people to create this for us because this is not our space, this is their space. So they can see it in their mind's eye where in a way that maybe we can't see it yet. So ask, for example, sometimes I ask people, if it depends on the client, sometimes I ask them for what would it like on the wall, would be, what would it be like on the wall as a plaque? What would it be like on a uh, social media post? What it would be like on, you know, two or three things, not too much because you don't want to um, take advantage, but you want to see how do I use it? So can you give me examples of how can I use it? And again, good brand designers will always do this for you, okay? Number six, yes, don't micromanage the relationship, okay? Find the brand designer that resonates with you, that can express your story, that you trust, that you love their work. Don't micromanage them. Give them your story, tell them your story, share your, your story, and then trust them because then they can imagine. They've got the boundaries in which to work of who you are, now let them create. I don't hassle brand designers when they're in the process to get them get me the brand faster. I want to do it within a reasonable amount of time. I do not nag because I want the space for them to create. That's really important. Give them the space, don't micromanage. They're not a graphic designer, it's not that. They are storytelling. Give them the space to use their imagination create something very powerful for you, that you fall in love with yourself all over again because you got something that works, yeah? Okay, number seven. <laughs> if you're rebranding, here's the thing, I see this all the time. If you're rebranding and your new brand has arrived and you're ready to launch, get rid of the old stuff. Do not have any of the old stuff hanging around. I've seen this time and time again, it kills me, when one sign is left on a wall just because it's inconvenient to get a ladder to take it down or something leaks out onto letterhead. We don't want to waste the paper. Go put it into recycling. It's got to disappear. It's death by a thousand cuts by allowing another brand, allowing your old brand to be leaking in at the same time as your new brand. It doesn't give you this firm line between the past and the future. And we need this firm line between the past and the future for this to work. Get rid of the old stuff when you're bringing out the new stuff. Really important. It kills the whole point of the rebrand in the first place. Last one for you, all right? Oh yeah, once you've got that brand firmly in place, okay? You've got your proper launch, you've done it all, 
it's all gone right across all your media, all your touch points all over the place. Don't be so rigid. Consistency is the first step on establishing your brand in situ. Being consistent, having no leakage, no old brand creeping in anywhere. Don't be lazy about that. But when you get to that point, when you have that consistency, give it space to breathe. Give it space to evolve. Allow it to be used in slightly different contexts so that your customers look at it slightly different and it doesn't become wallpaper. Allow it to grow, allow it to evolve. I love brand guidelines. I think they're really important. In fact, they're critical for brand rollout. But I also know that we can become too staid, too rigid, too restrictive and lacking in imagination and lacking in destination even, or vision, when we're too rigid about this. Yes, we can see it in Coca-Cola that they have the same shade of red every time, but they reinvent that brand in loads of different ways over time with different campaigns. We have this solid spine of brand design, but then we've got to have space. Allow yourself the space once the consistency is in. That's all I have for you today, guys. I hope you, design hope you liked it. And what I would love to know from you today is, do you love your brand? And if you do, can you share it in the comments below? Send me a link or an image or a picture because I'd love to collect them. I'd love to see all these brands that you love and tell me why you love them. And I'll tell you why I love mine. Have a wonderful day. This has been Ask Finola How and we were at episode four, Brand Design. I shall see you next week. Let me know in the next week is there any questions that you might have for me that you'd like to know about marketing, strategic marketing, brand and such things and have a great day. Take care.